Hello and welcome. Now, if you're thinking of buying a new car, it is very likely someone will offer you gap insurance or a lease loan payoff insurance. In this video, I'll talk about the meaning of each and one of them and the difference. Now, I will also talk which one is a better choice and what is a better or smarter financial decision. Now, if you haven't already, please like the video so that you don't become that guy who buys a brand new Model 3 and crashes it without gap insurance. Now, what is the meaning of gap insurance? GAP stands for Guaranteed Asset Protection. It is a coverage for if your car is totaled in an accident and the insurance settlement is less than the value you owe, GAP insurance would technically cover the remaining of the loan. Now, these types of claims are only exercisable when it's a total loss, not a bender fender. It has to be a total loss in order for both GAP or loan lease payoff to be, um, I guess, exercised. This may also have some restrictions and these may vary state by state. Typically, there can only be a maximum of $50,000 maximum coverage and you can get GAP insurance on loans of 82 months and above. Although GAP insurance is optional, some loan companies may require it in order to approve the loan. Now, what is the difference between lease loan payoff and gap insurance? The answer is simple. It's actually nothing. It's just a simple way, a different way of, of explaining it or offering it to you. Now, here in the image, I can explain visually what gap insurance or lease loan payoff does for you. If you owe the bank $22,000 and you have a total loss car accident, and the insurance pays you $15,000, technically the gap insurance would cover $7,000 so that you don't have to pay that to the bank from your own pocket. Now, another example is this Mazda right here. Mazda 6, new price value was $24,652. The amount of the loan was $25,000. The value of the car is $24,652. So you already technically owe the bank $348 more. A year from now, the car has depreciated. And so now the amount of the loan is only $20,000, but the car value is $18,753. Now, if you were to crash that car and the insurance were to pay you something, they would only pay you the car value, not the amount of the loan. So in this case, you would still have to pay the insurance company, uh, or I guess the financing company, $1,247. Now let's go forward, 2015, the amount of the loan is $15,000, your car value now it's only $14,452, you would only come short $548. Now 2016, the amount of the loan is only $10,000, the car value is actually now worth more than what you owe because you've been paying the car off. Now in 2017, you would have only $5,000 on the loan and the car value would still be around 9,253. That would actually bring you $4,000 above. So moral of the story here is gap insurance actually only helps you in the very beginning of the period of the car. As you pay off the car, gap insurance becomes useless. It actually, you don't need it. You can't use it anymore. In this graph right here, we can see that if a car was worth $26,000, the first 48 months technically is when you really need that gap insurance. And if you really want to take advantage of that gap insurance or lease loan payoff, you would be better off totaling your car within the first six months or six to 12 months. That's when the car is least valued and technically you still owe most of the loan. Now, if you see towards the end, really gap insurance disappears. There's no more difference of gap. You don't owe the bank more than what the car is worth. So you don't need gap insurance after 48 months for the most part. Now, the difference really between lease loan payoff and gap insurance is that lease loan payoff is typically offered by insurance companies and a gap insurance is offered by the company financing the car. The disadvantage of going with gap insurance with the bank financing you is that they typically lock you in for the full 72 month or the full loan period of that vehicle. 
So if you're paying 72 months, they're going to be charging you gap insurance for all those 72 months. While on the contrary, when you go with an insurance company, typically you change your policy every six months and you could decide, you know, within 48 months or three years to simply remove that coverage and get yourself out of that specific coverage because you don't need it anymore. Now, this is simply for educational purposes. I would always encourage you to uh, take a look and carefully analyze which is the best option for you. Talk with your financing company. Ask them if you can actually withdraw from the gap insurance. And at the end of the day, for me personally, it has always worked better to go with the insurance company and get that lease loan payoff option rather than gap insurance. But I'm sure there are some banks out there that are more flexible and that could provide a better sort of benefit if you've been their customer for a while. So with that being said, I personally was able to save roughly around three to four dollars a month. But again, overall for the term of my loan, for my the term of my car loan, that comes up to two hundred and eight dollars, two hundred and ten dollars, which is significant. You know, may not be very significant in a monthly basis, but you still might be able to save some money if you go with a lease loan payoff. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Also subscribe for videos like these, or if you want me to explain another topic about a specific subject or something about loans or credit building, feel free to comment and also subscribe so that you know when I'm releasing any new videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.